On the 23rd of September, Denmark's first bus rapid transit line was opened in Aalborg. Running across the city from east to west with smart new bi-articulated electric buses, this new mode of transit will greatly improve capacity and quality of public transport in the city. So join me in this slightly special video where we check out Aalborg's new Plus Boost line. The line starts out in the western part of the city at the station called Dedløbsbanen. The bus uses a loop to the west of the station to turn around, where there's also a small layover facility. But it will seem to be the case that buses mostly just turn straight back and head to the eastbound platform ready for the next departure. But before I show you some more of the new infrastructure, let's take a look at the route the bus will run. The line starts in the west at Vedløbsbanen, and then starts heading into the city along Kastetvej, with a major interchange point with the railway at Aalborg Vestby station. From here the line enters the city center, stopping at places like Nytorv and Aalborg's main railway station. From here the line runs in the median of a large arterial road, running in mostly dedicated bus lanes for the rest of the journey down towards Aalborg University. Conveniently connecting you to Gigantium, the large event center, before running right through the heart of Aalborg University. The line terminates at AAU bus terminal for now, but once the new university hospital is complete, the line will continue all the way to terminate there. In total, the line will cover 12 kilometers with 22 stations from east to west. On the western part of the line, the buses don't have dedicated lanes, but run along heavily car restricted roads. With the buses also, for instance, getting priority at intersections. And a ban on all traffic without purpose to nearby buildings. And this is also helped enforced with the installation of various bus gates along the route, such as here nearby to Olbo Vespu station. Connecting to the train at Olbo Vespu is fairly easy, as it's just a matter of heading up or down the stairs. Here we see one of DSB's intercity services departing for Copenhagen. All the bus stops have been upgraded along the route, with most of them featuring a large shelter with a bench and electronic displays showing the next departure. They also all have Reisecord vending machines. And if you don't have a Reisecord, you can find instructions on here how to buy a ticket. The screen shows the upcoming stations along the route, as well as nearby bus and train departures. As is the case with most trains and trams in Denmark, the check-in and check-out standards are on the platform. But it is also possible to check in, but not check out on the bus. The buses are built by Polish bus manufacturer Solaris and are fully electric running on batteries. At almost 25 meters long, they have to snake through the city. The seating layout is quite varied. And there's plenty of space for you to bring on your bike or proms or anything like that. Nice, easy to understand LCD screens showing your journey information and connections. The layout really is varied to suit a city with many needs. In general, I think these buses are quite nice. It feels a little more crammed and constrained than on a tram or a light rail vehicle. But it's comfortable and good for these urban environments. We are now at Nuttall, in the heart of the city, at one of the busy stops, and I think they've done a great job here at integrating the bus into the rest of the city.
The line was actually originally planned to be a light rail system, like with Aarhus and Odense here in Denmark. But unfortunately, a previous government cut the funding for that, and in the end it ended up just being a cheaper bus rapid transit solution. One of the benefits of bus rapid transit is that other buses can also benefit from the improvements when they share part of the route. Such as here in the city centre where the normal city buses also run down the same street. At the heart of the system we find John F. Kennedy's Place, co-located with the main railway station and the bus terminal. This is the city's main transportation hub, allowing you to swiftly connect from long distance buses to regional and urban ones, as well as to the trains. And I really like the simple but pretty canopy they've done here for the bus stop. Continuing on from the main station, the line gets dedicated bus lanes in the middle of the road, which are also used by the city buses on various routes. Also, watch out for the art installations along the route. Especially the mosaic pavement tiles that can be found throughout the line. On Bornholmsgade, in the eastern part of the city, there's a short section without dedicated bus lines. However, almost all car traffic has been discouraged here by making it impossible to use as a through road, thanks to the bus gates inside Etreniten station. After Etreniten, the buses once again enter bus lanes in the middle of the road. The line continues like this, down to the station at Grønlands Tor. At Grønlands Tor, the buses instead have a dedicated busway to the side of the road and have to cross over this big intersection to get into the median bus lanes. Like a normal bus, Stops are only made if there are passengers getting on or off, so sometimes you get the bus running through non-stop like this. I imagine this is gonna happen a lot here at Pendelpleasant for a little while. This is a park and ride station, and so far only the station has been built, but the parking lot is still under construction. The line segment out here by Pendlerplassen and Gigantium is completely separate from normal car traffic. At the eastern end of the system, the line cuts through Aalborg University's large campus. And I can imagine this will be super well used by the students, but probably not on a Sunday morning where this was recorded. The stations here also follow the same design language as the rest of the line. On the weekends as well as early morning and late night, the buses run every 15 minutes, Otherwise, they run every seven and a half. The line currently temporarily terminates at Aalborg University bus terminal, 
This is also the only station not to have been upgraded with new shelters or anything like that. So, make sure you get your way out here before they change the line, as the turnaround maneuver here will only be temporary. In the future, the buses will continue right past Aalborg University bus terminal and instead continue out towards the new hospital. The buses will instead stop at the nearby Selma Leerlöf 2, which is currently served by some regional buses running at not too great frequencies. The following final stretch out to the new hospital is still under construction, so we'll have to see when that opens in the future. And that's all I have to show you of the new Olbor Plus Plus BRT system. I hope you have enjoyed this slightly different video compared to my normal train trip reviews. I thought it'd be interesting to showcase something brand new from my home country in Denmark, so let me know down below what you think of Olbor's new Plus Plus. And if you have liked this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel, I try to post a new video every Sunday. You can also follow me over on Twitter, it's a great place to get a sneak peek at what videos might be coming in the future, as I post live for my travels over on there. Thanks for watching!